All right, Eddie, what was life like before you came to 180TC? So life before 180, um, it's been a long, it's been a long road, long road, um, almost, you know, it's just been fueled by drugs, lots of um, confusion, I guess, and um, like a kind of plagued by, I guess, trauma, but I don't. Um, you know, it's a good excuse, but it's no real good reason. Um, so I've, I've lent on that stuff as an excuse for behaviour and that kind of thing, but, you know, it doesn't, um, it's not going to cut it forever. Yeah. What, when was, what led you to 180TC specifically? So, uh, Kashana, who is Nakoda's mum, she... You know, I, I, I'd had a really a big bust up on the Gold Coast, um, with a very substantial, like it was dangerous. Um, I could have died through that so easily. Um, and because I'd been going to church and stuff, she really lent into uh, Christian rehab. Um, I was on a place, I was in a place at, on the Gold Coast, and she found 180TC, and I spoke to Andrew Varlow. I think almost 18 months before I came here um, and so I was considering it, to tell you the truth I didn't completely like the sound of it, um, yeah, that's so that sparked it. Yeah. You made the phone call to Andrew and obviously you've been accepted into the program, yeah. tell us about what your thoughts are coming up that dirt road. Oh, uh, so my detox was hard. Um, it was a hard detox this time. I went into a rapid detox um, because of certain medications, so it was horrible. Coming here, I <laughs> had my dad in the car and my brother in the car, and uh, as soon as we hit that dirt road, I just thought, this place is gonna be so filthy. Uh, it was a hot day, like stinking hot. And, um, you know, I met Ray and Mitch, the front office and I guess that was the start of it, yeah. What would you say in settling into the program were your biggest challenges? Settling in was just, the biggest challenge I guess was my body coming good. Uh, I had, it's like I had concrete boots on, um, I was still like, it, it was almost like from, you know, my, oh, I guess the whole thing like, I was sick. I was sick, you know, still in opiate withdrawals. Um, my guts were just a ride off, and I just hadn't had sort of regular food and that kind. Share with us some highlights from your past six um, months in program. So the highlights, uh, you know, doing the golf day was pretty. Uh, it was a real challenge. Like that was like a gut um, challenge. Riding out. Um, the life story and being you know like really honest with it that's been a challenge um, like I've had uh, there's been some you know challenges with Kim and I guess like facing facing some stuff that happened when I was young you know and it's um, just looking at that stuff as uh, Oh, I get you, but it's got to be looked at. I can't, um, I can't avoid it anymore, or else I'll be sitting somewhere in another 20 years with a whole lot more baggage, and that stuff will still be there. And that's probably, you know, like the meat and potatoes of all of this. Yeah. That's why we're here. What, what, is, what does life after 180TC look like for Daniel? So, uh, life after 180TC. Um, nothing is impossible for, for God. Um, so, 
life after 180TC lockets. It's kind of a daunting question, but then it can be very exciting too because, um, like, my thoughts is I'm stuck in this and this isn't ever going to change. But if anything is possible, you know, like if I keep God here, um, I just think, you know, I want to I wanna give something back um, and I want to help people. Um, and I, I just, you know, with my kids around, just do the righty with my family around. Like, I don't, I don't need to hide in a different state away from them, yeah. Um, what has 180TC taught you about yourself? Um, you know, broken vessels, they may be broken, but they're still okay. They're good for stuff. Um, Anything else you want to share on that? Um, my name is Daniel Meyer and I'm a worthwhile person um, and I bring good things to the table. Yeah. Mm. What's your final encouragement, Daniel? Um, my final encouragement like it's only through lived experience this stuff doesn't go away um, like addiction is for me and from what I understand it, it's a progressive illness um, and I guess this is as good a place as anywhere to stop and to, to get this done you know it's a good excuse but no real good reason um, that leaning on the old stuff. This is a place where it can be addressed. And uh, yeah, I would say, keep on keeping on. It's gotta be done. It's gotta be done. Yeah. Um, curveball question. Mm -hmm. What do you think you are not gonna miss about being in the community? What am I not gonna miss? Uh, I think the toilets, you know? The, that's uh, on probably the septic smell, but <laughs> that's the worst of it. Yeah. Um, no, no, cool. Anything that you want to add before we close up the day? Uh, I would say use the pool to its fullest. That that pool will save me. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Oh, and one more thing, you know, okay. is. Um, <coughs> You know, like, uh, lean in and do everything, that's, that's an option. Like, lean into the stuff, to helping. Um, do more than you have to, because it keeps you busy and the time flies. Like, I was a driver, and I'd help the staff if they asked, or if you can, you don't always see it, but then when you see it, you're like, yeah, I can help. Um, and it, it's made my time fly, and it's not that I want to kiss ass, because it's mm. not about that, it's kept me busy, it's been, it's been good for, you know, you guys to help, but it's also, it, it's got me through. Yeah, mm. it's mad. Like, it's not a bad thing, and you learn and grow, and no complaints. <laughs>